meaning. Um, turn with me in your Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 16. During this time, it's my first time at the Red Hot Preaching Conference, and um, we've had a lot of in-your-face preaching, and, and, and as Pastor Romero said, that you know that's what you want, and that's what I want, and I wanted like, tell me what I'm doing wrong. Here's my list. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. But I found that the what was most powerful for me was the testimonies, the ordinary people. You know, the brothers that moved their families across the country, or the brothers that traveled two, two, two hours away to come to this church. And I want to talk a little bit about just ordinary people, um, if I could. So 1 Samuel chapter 16, and uh, we'll look at verse uh, number 1. It says, And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him, for reigning over Israel? Fill thine heart the horn with oil and go. I will send thee to Jesse and Bethlehem, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with thee, and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. So here Samuel is about to anoint a new king. He's afraid about he's afraid of that, saying, Well, if Saul finds out, he's gonna kill me. He says, Don't worry about it, take a heifer. As far as you're concerned, you're going to sacrifice unto the Lord. This is in verse in verse three he goes. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint me, uh, him whom I name thee. And Samuel did that which was the Lord spake, and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming. See, we talked a lot about God's people, uh, those that are against God, people trembling, just like that protest. I wasn't here for that, but I can only imagine they're still they're not here no more. So they tremble at the sound of the coming of the Lord. Here comes. Uh, Samuel. It says in verse 5, and he, he said, Peace, uh, do you come peacefully? He said, Yes, peacefully. I, I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourself and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called to the sacrifice. And Jesse had uh, eight sons. So he goes, And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the uh, Lord's anointed. So here's Eliab, the oldest of the sons of Jesse. And he, being the oldest, pretty much you were the next head of the household. So he must be a strapping young man. And Samuel says, all right, this has got to be a... I would show you strapping, but... Don't, don't that. That's okay. Where's Moses? That's a strapping young man. Um, but he, does, he doesn't see that. You know, Samuel says, all right, surely this is the one. But God says unto Samuel, look not on his countenance. Don't look at his face. Don't look at his height, his stature, because I've already refused him. You see, ordinary people don't look like what we think they should look like. You know, when we talk about Red Hot Preaching, you know, Pastor Jimenez coming up here, Pastor Anderson, uh, they're not these huge buffs of men saying, hey, don't do this, don't do that. They're ordinary people. Yeah, that's right. So he says, because I have already refused him, for the Lord seeth not as man seeth, but man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. That's he right. those who yeah. don't have a heart for the Lord are going to look for the strapping young man to lead them. Yeah. But the yeah. Lord doesn't look for that. Yeah. Yeah. Then he calls oh, Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel and said, neither hath he chosen him. So he might be just a little bit less strapping. Yeah. The second of <laughs> but he wasn't called as well. Then Jesse made Sh Shema to pass and he said, neither hath he chosen him. Jesse uh, uh, made all seven of his sons. But notice that all seven of his sons passed by. Do you see what the Lord is doing? He's not only calling David, this is a, a, a pre replica to David coming in the picture here, but he's showing, I don't need someone like that. And if I don't need someone like that, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna call who I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call that ordinary person. I'm gonna call that pastor that I think should be leading this church. Okay. Not yeah. someone who, 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 just because they have knowledge, they know uh, uh, Bible college and things like that. No, 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 I don't want that guy. I want the one who's going to serve me with his heart. That's right. Right. The right. is that David had a heart for the Lord. That's right. So let's keep reading. Let's jump down to verse 11. And Samuel said unto Jesse, are there any uh, here? I want you to think about something. These men, these sons of Jesse have come, and they're probably thinking, wow, it's going to be me. You see, they didn't have a heart for the Lord. So, Lord, 
Notice how God just says, all right, but I'm going to call someone in front of you. I remember when Pastor Anderson had said that. You know, I'm not trying to be the leader, but because nobody is doing anything, it just seems like I'm outrunning them. Yeah, you see, right. so the Lord is going to call someone who is going to take that next step. And I came over Very here true. with some questions this particular weekend about what myself and my family are doing here in this particular church. So it's interesting that he makes them all pass by him. Thank you. The Samuel said to Jesse, do you have any that remain? And he said, yes, one youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he comes here. You notice how the Lord is not leaving until he calls who he's going to call in front of everybody else. Go over to Luke chapter 8 very quickly, because I want to show you another a passage of scripture of ordinary people. And I'm going to start reading. I know some of you are still working your way there. But Luke chapter 8 and verse 43. It says, and a woman having an issue of blood 12 years, which has spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any of them, came behind him and touched the border of his garment. Now, this woman sees Jesus coming. She has a, 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 a bleeding issue. And back in those days, you were exiled from the people. So she says, all right, well, I'm going I'm to pull a fast one, and I'm going to sneak and touch this guy's garment, because I believe he's going to heal me. <laughs> so this woman had faith. We'll talk about that faith in a moment because it mentions it here. In verse 45, Jesus said, who touched me? And here's Peter. You know how, you know how funny <laughs> Peter is that, yo, dude, don't you see all these people? You're asking me who touched you? Like, what's going on here? He says, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the, the multitude from thee impress thee and, and sayest thou who touched me? <laughs> Jesus said, somebody touched me for I perceive that virtue or power have gone out of me. You see, this ordinary woman had the faith to, to believe that she was going to be healed by Jesus. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she was trembling. And falling down before him, she declared unto him before the, all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she, had, she was healed immediately. But notice what Jesus did, what God does. You see how he was waiting to call David? He calls this woman and he says, Daughter, be of good <clears throat> comfort. Thy faith had made you whole. Go in peace. You see... He called his daughter out of the dark. You see, he's calling. They weren't going anywhere back in Samuel. Just go right back there to verse 16. Until the Lord was going to see David. In verse 12, he says, And he sent and brought him, and now he was ruddy, and withal a beautiful countenance, and goodly to look on. And the Lord said, Arise, and anoint him. So this message is, for, is called ordinary people. So are you that ordinary person that God is calling? Not that person that... that uh, Possibly knows everything. Ordinary people like Brother Oliver, who called, well, I was talking to back and forth, saying that the church is praying for me and my family about decisions to be made. Um, like uh, Brother Jared saying that he moved his entire family over there. Just ordinary people, ordinary right. testimonies. Right. The Bible says, uh, If any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing, yet as he ought to know. But if any man love God, the same is known of him. Amen. God knew this woman. God knew David. Does God know us? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, praise you for this day uh, of your word, and just thank you for soaking us with everything that you have given us this weekend, Lord, and I pray that it doesn't go in void. I pray that you would use us mightily. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. amen.